and it's it's pretty quick too like you can um all right i'm pretty excited about this one i ordered my first dji product and it's not a drone so let me unbox the box and we'll see what came all right Ooh, the osmo mobile when you ordered on christmas you also got the osmo base and an extra osmo battery We'll get this opened up and learn how to use it and I'll show you uh, some footage from it once I get it going. Started a video recording using the Osmo Mobile and the Movie Pro app. I'll do another test using DJI Go, another test using Filmic Pro, and another test using uh, the default iPhone camera. Alright, this is the same setup, same shot with the DJI Go app. So while I'm still recording, I'm going to turn on Active Track. So now it's locked onto my face. Now it actually tracks me around the room. So if I wanted to, uh, to you know, go and do some other things, I could do that. So that is the coolest thing about using DJI Go. It's the only one that has the active tracking, and it's it's pretty quick too. Like you can um, you can try and get away from it, but it's pretty good. And if it loses you, it will then reacquire once it detects what uh, what it's looking for so this technology is pretty good but one thing that um, uh, it can't do is it doesn't have like depth this is just detecting an image like a 2d image so it doesn't know anything about the profile of of what it's looking for so if you have an object and it rotates 180 degrees it doesn't look the same anymore and it will lose it um, let's just try that for a second let me turn the back of my head and at this point, it probably has lost me. I wish there was a way for me to check to see. Oh, it actually it seems to be tracking, isn't it? Whoa, it actually was tracking, right? Well, it's lost me now, but uh, there, now it's back on me. And um, so that was the, one of the main reasons for getting the Osmo Mobile is for active track. The other ones don't have that, and it is a very, very cool feature. One thing that I was thinking about, though, was uh, it's more so of a limitation or something I would have hoped for for the Osmo Mobile is wouldn't it be awesome if the head could rotate 360 degrees? Uh, it seems to limit at about, mm, I don't know, 270 degrees and then it locks out in all directions and I'll show that. For what I'm thinking about using it for, not so much for vlogging, but for something like if I want to track an object like this, which I'm now locked on to this quadcopter, right? And uh, if this quadcopter is flying around and if I wanted to fly completely, you know, around to the other side of the camera, it can't track it anymore. It is pretty neat though. It's cool technology. You just have to think about your shot. So I'm going to be trying to use this with, uh, I'm going to try some flying indoors and I'm going to try some, um, some cars outside at some point when the weather gets a bit nicer. But um, yeah, so this is hopefully what it will be like if you're going to fly something around the room and then it lost it but it requires pretty good place so this is kind of turning into a quality of the selfie camera as well as uh, active track um, active track I can only show in this app so getting back to my original point which was the front uh, camera quality this is using DJI go I'm now going to stop this recording and I will uh, use uh, filmic pro all right now I'm recording using filmic pro I'm using an iPhone 6s um, the other thing I want to get into is video stabilization. So right now I am using the Osmo Mobile. I'm moving my hand all around and uh, you know this is how nice and smooth it is. Down, pan right, pan left. If I wanted to try and do some like weird shots. You can do some really cool things with this. Um, I am liking it a bit more now that I've used it for a few days versus when I first got it, my initial impression was, ooh, buyer's remorse. It's, it's kind of uh, tamed itself a bit as I'm getting more used to the hardware, realizing some of its limitations and some of its positives, um, you know, pros and cons of the device, and, uh, and just getting used to it, really. Overall, it's good. It is still very much a premium product. 
and uh, you're paying for the privilege of the brand name and some of the software and some of the build quality you know you can get very artistic with it but I'm curious to try out some alternatives using some much cheaper options miniature tripods and using the movie pro cinematic electronic image stabilization accelerometer and sensors that's in the phone and it will make an incredibly smooth pan so I'm kinda curious to uh, I want to make a pan shot with the Osmo Mobile make a pan shot handheld and then make a pan shot with movie pro cinematic set and see if you can tell the difference All right, here I'm just gonna do a quick walk test. This is with the Osmo Mobile Movie Pro. I'm gonna walk down the stairs and show the dog. Here's the same walking test. I just got the phone in my hand. I'm gonna go down the stairs and this is stabilized using the cinematic stabilization in Movie Pro and I was running up and down the stairs. To me, that's really, really impressive. Like watch how Watch how quickly I can, I'm running. I'm running up the stairs right now. And this is with the phone in my hand. I'm just holding the phone. I don't know, that seems pretty darn good to me. So if you wanna save some money, just buy the Movie Pro app and turn on cinematic stabilization. Now you'll see if I pan down, pan up, pan right, pan left. Now it's using the, like a sensor crop. Actually, I really like that. It's like having a gimbal without having a gimbal. This is what I meant where if you if you want to get quality like you get out of a gimbal without using one, I really like this Movie Pro app with cinematic stabilization. All right, quick test. I'm just got the phone handheld right now so you can see all the micro shakes. Um, that's actually a good difference in showing what the gimbal does. It is still 720p on the front selfie camera. So no matter what app I've tried on an iPhone 6s, you cannot get the front selfie camera to produce a higher resolution image than a 720p video. Okay, here we have the DJI Osmo Mobile. Right now I'm using my phone to film it, so I, I just wanted to show you it like off and loose. So these are some of the things I was talking about where um, just I wanted to point out some of the flaws or maybe some of the limitations with it is that um, I was really hoping that that it would rotate a full 360 degrees. So this is the limit. So it locks locks here to here. And uh, how cool would it be if this had no limit, if it could just rotate fully and track an object in full 360 degrees because with the active track it would be wouldn't it be super cool if you could track an object in a full 360 no matter what orientation it is and then when you have your phone in it um, that's a lock out there so it, it can do a full pan from from about maybe what would that be like a, a down angle to a to a fully look at the ceiling angle you can do that but you can't fully uh, flip it around from front to back um, Anyway, so it does, uh, there is a bit of a limitation there. It's, you know, whatever. This is a first generation product. I can understand some of that. The other thing I wanted to point out was that the phone holder, well, the phone holder, overall the build quality is excellent, but the phone holder itself uses this knurled knob and, um, and I don't have a problem with that. I actually really like it. But my problem is, is look at how shallow the clamp is. So this fits an iPhone 6 really well, um, but not in a case. I mean, my case works because it's a super slim leather case, but if you had a beefy case on or a battery case, you absolutely cannot fit your phone in that. Um, I also have an LG G3, and even outside of the case, it um, it doesn't fit very well. Let me, let me go grab it. I'll show you that. I mean, it's still a fairly thin phone, but it does have that bit of a curve, and uh, I do find that it's actually kind of... Like, it fits, but it's it's really, really tight. So I can slip it in there, but it's, oh, it's like going to break it tight. Um, 
makes me feel somewhat a little bit uncomfortable. So if you have a phone that, um, and then if you look at it, how well is that actually hooked on there? Not very well. I've actually had it come fly out of there once. So if you have a phone that has a curved back, like I'm thinking um, the Motorola's, a lot of the Motorola's have a curved back, a lot of the LG's have a, have a curved back, like an LG G4, I don't think would fit in this at all because it has it has a bit of a curve to the uh, to the screen. So while this mount is a nice design, it doesn't seem very compatible with with a lot of phones. It fits iPhones fine, but if you are running any kind of a weird case or if you have any kind of a phone with a weird shape, it may not fit, um, and uh, that would be a huge disappointment after spending this kind of money on a device like this. Uh, one thing to note also, if you're going to order one, take a look at DJI's return policy because it's not very good. Um, seven days unopened, 15 days if there's a defect, and that's it. Um, if you buy it, if you don't like it, if you have buyer's remorse, want to return it, and just because you don't like it, you might be in for a bit of a fight uh, if you ordered it from DJI Direct. One other thing I wanted to point out was the the adjustment for the phone on this knob is nice and smooth. It's a gear. You can. It's it's a very nice design. The um, the adjustment here to adjust the balance. So right now I have it adjusted for my iPhone. If I try and balance this, it will likely fall. Oh, it's pretty good actually. Looks like they're pretty close. Um, anyway, this adjustment here, if you loosen this off, it's just a slide friction fit. It feels very cheap. It, uh, it's just an, an elongated uh, hole and you have a, a, this pivots in and out, slides in and out, and that's it. It's not, um, it's not a nice gear driven uh, fine adjustment like I was hoping for. So that's something that I didn't notice in other reviews. This adjustment, the phone adjustment mount for clamping it down is really nice, but the mount is, is very shallow. It's gonna be hard to fit some devices. And the, uh, the counterweight adjustment isn't, uh, isn't a very quality feel. The front panel controls I like a lot. The grip itself has, a, um, has like a rubber style camera body on the front, but on the rear where your fingers go, this is just hard plastic. This is just cheapo hard plastic. And, um, and they reuse the body design from the original Osmo. That's why that 3.5 millimeter jack is used for charging is because they didn't want to make a new mold. The uh, This is part of the holiday sale. I got this base unit. It's just a hunk of plastic. I don't like it very much. Uh, it has a bit of a wobble to it. I feel, I, I'm trying not to be too negative, but you know what? There's so many videos online of the Osmo Mobile that are, that are incredibly positive. I wanna show some things that you may not have seen before. So the, uh, the base itself seems a little bit wobbly. And uh, personally, I, I, you know, that's fine because you're using a gimbal, but if you were gonna go buy this for 10 or $15 yourself, I don't think it's worth it. Just go and get the uh, Amazon Basics miniature tripod and uh, I'll show you how the Osmo Mobile can be set up on that. And actually, I think it's a little bit nicer. This is the Amazon Basics miniature tripod. And uh, in some ways, I think it's a better, more useful thing than the Osmo Mobile base for around a similar price. This is, what, $10 US. This you can get for $8.99 Canadian on Amazon. And um, the reason why I don't like the base is I just find it a little bit bulky. Uh, I don't think it's very good for travel. Um, it's all plastic and it's got this Whatever, it's got the button on it. That's how you eject it. That's how it ejects. It's got a little piece of foam on the bottom. Like it's fine, but it's it's nothing to write home about. It's uh, it's not even really very well counterweighted. It's anyway, I don't trust it all that much. If you take the Amazon Basics tripod, it has a nice adjustable ball head, and uh, you can slide. You can take this part off. Whoa, oh, I'm using the Joby pod. So the tripod that I'm showing is what I'm normally using and that's why it's kind of flopping around. Took the plate off, okay? So now you can take this and the uh, the Osmo Mobile has this, this cover comes with the Osmo Mobile, but that's what you're looking for. So that uh, that rosette mount, then you can just screw this in. Checked out the legs. 
there. All right, and there we have the Osmo Mobile hooked up to the Amazon Basics miniature tripod. Let me get this base out of here. I'll need this. I wouldn't recommend buying it. Um, you can make up better uses with the tripod. So as long as it has a adjustable ball head on your tripod and it doesn't have a, a big mount because the, the way the Osmo Mobile base is, is shaped, it has this curve to it. So you need to have basically just the thread that goes in. And um, anyway, and then you can set up a tripod. So that's an option. And if you have a bigger tripod, that's even better. Uh, a trick that I found that's not really well documented and it's something that uh, I've kind of stumbled across is there's a trigger on the back of it, right? The trigger is, uh, if you double click it, it centers the gimbal. And if you triple click it, it switches from the, if I, if I triple click it, it switches from the front to the back camera. Press and hold the trigger and then push up on the joystick. You can do a zoom. Active track off, static shot, I can hold the trigger and push up to do a zoom in. All right, so that works. And uh, if we go back to active track, pick my face. Okay, so now it's tracking me. And if I try and do that same maneuver of click the trigger and push up, push down, it doesn't work. So if you're in active track mode, you're at a fixed zoom level, which makes sense. You kind of have to be zoomed out for it to be effectively tracking your face anyway. Oh boy, so that was a lot of information about the Osmo Mobile. I realized that, but I wanted to just go over a couple things that I liked and disliked about it, and um, hopefully you like this. Oh, active. That's one, that's one funny thing, is that if active track is on, it can really fight you in trying to pan. So the joystick control isn't all that useful when you have active track set up. Um, all right. So thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and share around if this was helpful and you like this video. Thanks. Bye.